Hello, and welcome to another presentation of Weir Wednesday as we explore the Weir Collection at Riverbrink Art Museum. In honor of the many images of Niagara Falls and other local images that reside in the Samuel E. Weir Collection, I thought we shift our attention to English-born topographer and watercolor painter, General Sir William Henry Barnard's 1830s work titled Niagara Falls. This is not the only work by Barnard in the collection, nor is this the only scene of Niagara Falls by Barnard in the collection. His other works include a view of the Clifton House Hotel and various other landscape scenes of Lake George, Lake Charles, uh, the church at La Baie Saint Antoine, and the inn at Caldwell. Sir William Henry Barnard was born in Oxfordshire, England in 1799 into a family with strong Church of England affiliations, receiving formal education at Westminster School and Sandhurst. By the age of 15, Barnard was commissioned into the British Army, serving in the Grenadier Guards Infantry Regiment throughout the occupation of Paris during the Napoleonic Wars. Achieving rank of captain by the age of 23, Bernard served in the West Indies and later in Canada from 1837 to 38 and then 1842. Bernard was a gifted military topographer and a watercolorist whose time in Canada revealed his artistic ability through the creation of dozens of landscape watercolors based on his travels. Although he was stationed in Quebec, he did take a specific trip throughout Ontario, New York State, New Hampshire, and Boston from 1838 to 1839, with records placing him in Niagara in September of 1838. His time in Canada, he served various postings throughout England and abroad. And in 1857, he received appointment to the staff in Bengal where he would eventually fall, not in battle, but to cholera, which at the time was moving aggressively through the British forces. Samuel Weir acquired Niagara and 11 other watercolor works in 1965 from Mag's Brothers Dealers via Sotheby's London, England. William Henry Barnard's Niagara Falls watercolor is strikingly similar to the famed Frederick Edwin Church work of the same name, although it was created nearly a quarter century earlier. Barnard seen here as viewed from the Canadian side, draws heavily on the atmospheric conditions awaiting visitors to Niagara Falls, which stands out from the works that he created from his travels throughout Eastern Canada and the United States. Rendered in a restrained palette of aquamarines, grays and whites, one feels as if they are perched right at the water's edge. The billowing mist is front and center, literally, literally swallowing up three quarters of the scene and exuding an almost abstract quality through the play of color, transparency, and minimally defined landscape forms. There is no anchoring horizon line, nor are there any frames of reference. Other than the ominous precipice looming in the immediate foreground, and the Terrapin Tower, which is an observation area located in Niagara Falls, New York. Bernard's work is notable for both its formal composition qualities and how paintings, although two-dimensional, can evoke the immersive nature of awesome landscapes. The work that I would like to share as a point of comparison to Barnard's is perhaps one of the most recognizable and iconic paintings of Niagara Falls shown here 
by Frederick Edwin Church. This work is housed at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, DC. Church's 1857 oil on canvas work titled Niagara is the painting by which so many are compared. And there are many striking similarities to this work and that of Bernard that are worth sharing. Over the course of the 19th century, many artists attempted to capture the power and the beauty of Niagara Falls as the site served as a symbol of the youthful vigor and promise of a new world. From the perspective of many Europeans, the site was widely deemed far superior to any natural phenomenon in Europe. Among churches find detail and naturalism, it was the sense of immediacy and illusion of reality that helped elevate his work from a mere yet accurate rendering of the site to an immersive experience that captured the attention and even more special, the imagination of anyone who encountered it. Everything from the faint rainbow floating across the left side of the canvas and behind the precipice to the artist's choice of working with a wide canvas format pulls the viewer into the work and stirs up the feelings and sensations of actually being at the site, which might be familiar to you as you view this work, if you've been lucky to have visited Niagara before. Returning to Barnard's work here, Barnard, like Church, eliminates any suggestion of a foreground, allowing the viewer to experience the scene as if precariously positioned, quite literally, on the brink. Anyone that visits or has visited Niagara might come to experience the notion of liminality or threshold, whether it be the binational border, the interface of land and water, the sheer fault line between the waterfall and the gorge below, or even the break between sky and mist. Barnard's foreground is truncated, even more so than churches, as we do not see the termination of water to land on either side of the canvas. This not only expresses a sense of deeper immersion into the site, but also encourages the eye to focus on the mists and the play of depth and transparency. Bernard is not only sharing the effects of the site with us, he is also encouraging to explore how the site itself might reveal opportunity for further and deeper contemplation of the surrounding world. And further yet, a deeper contemplation and reflection of ourselves within it. We are also so excited to share that Bernard's work is in fact available to adopt as part of our new fundraising campaign, Adopt an Artwork, which provides a wonderful and unique opportunity to support the permanent collection here at Riverbrink Art Museum. Although adopted artwork will remain at Riverbrink, your financial support enables you to establish a special connection with a beloved work of art. Your adoption helps support ongoing care and ongoing conservation of artworks, and it helps ensure the future of the collection. When you adopt an artwork, your name will be showcased on a label when the work is exhibited. But of course, donors can remain anonymous if they prefer. Adopting an artwork is also a wonderful memorial tribute for an art lover and a Riverbrink supporter please visit our website to learn more. Thank you for joining us for another Weir Collection Wednesday, and please stay tuned for the next video to learn more about our special collection here at Riverbrink Art Museum. <laughs>